Can you ever trust again? Stay tuned. Hi, how are you? My name is Erica Angelo, and if you don't know who I am, I am the CEO and founder of the Erica Angelo Intimacy Experience, and I help influencers birth and fuel their legacy through intimacy. And today I wanna share with you a very intimate subject, which is trust. Can you ever trust again? I did a poll on my social media, on my Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, all those places we go. And I said, hey guys, I'm shooting some YouTube videos. What topics would you like me to cover? And lo and behold, someone that I treasure dearly uh, said, hey, do you mind sharing about trust and how to ever trust again? And I said, wow, that's even a hard topic even for me. So I just want to say that this is a challenging subject and I'm not gonna approach it from, this is a one, two, three, I'm just gonna share my heart and what I have found that has worked and what's not worked for me. Trust is a very interesting thing. It is one of those foundational pieces in a relationship and anything, whether it's business, family, friendship, or uh, intimate relationship where there's romance involved. And when you've experienced betrayal, uh, trust can be very tricky to have when you're in a relationship or moving forward with other people. I remember um, going through a really difficult situation in my own life where I just felt very betrayed by some situations. And what happened was mistrust started developing in my heart. And when I would go into relationships, I would always communicate it just like this. I would say, listen, like, can you just be really upfront with me? And just please don't lie to me. Just tell me the truth from the get-go. And what would happen? They would lie, right? And what happens is we think that we can like shield ourselves from it. It's like, don't ever hurt me again because betrayal hurts so deeply. And so for me, that was like putting up like a, please don't do this to me because it hurts so much. And I just don't know if I can bear that impact again. <sighs> and the thing is, is I realized that there were just places in myself where I felt very betrayed by myself, like how could I let this happen to me? How, how did this happen to me? And so there's some self-betrayal going there on top of what other people have done. And I will say this, first and foremost, this is kind of like my defense mechanism, my some a tool that is a boundary for me, but is also a defense mechanism. Don't ever, ever let anyone ever shame you because you struggle with trust. I have seen that in relationships where if you share with someone that you struggle with trust, that they say, oh, you know, like that's just your trust issues. No one should ever take a portion of your life where you've been hurt and use that against you. That is an absolute violation. And if someone does that to you in a relationship, that you have every right to say, you don't have permission to violate me. I don't violate myself and you sure as hell don't get to violate me. So that's just a kind of like a boundary. But in terms of building trust, first and foremost, we have to cultivate trust within ourselves. Are we in integrity with ourselves? Do we say, hey, I'm gonna do this and do we really follow through with it? Do we take the time to really invest and nurture and care for ourselves? Or do we betray ourselves? Do we push ourselves harder? Do we say do more, be more? Meanwhile, we neglect ourselves the entire time because that is a form of betrayal. And so what I would encourage you is first and foremost, make sure that you're not the one betraying yourself first because it's very easy to look at other people and go, don't ever hurt me. But meanwhile, sometimes we can be the most grueling people to ourselves and we can hurt 
ourselves so much. And I will just be very transparent. I still judge myself sometimes so hard. And that's harsh and that's betrayal to be able to treat myself that way is not an integrity with myself. And so I am constantly going, Erica, show yourself some grace, show yourself some mercy. And you have soft skin, so just why don't you do this all the time anyways? But that's first and foremost. And then practically, like if you're in a relationship, listen, trust is something that is built. Like don't ever like, let someone put a demand on you. You should just trust me. No, you don't. Nobody gets that. The way that trust is developed is it's cultivated. It's by you saying you're going to do something and then following through with that and having that happen time and time again. And the other thing is this, it's transparency, transparency. If you're like me, I've struggled with trust and there's so much shame that comes on that. Like even, you know, you don't want to talk about it with a therapist because sometimes even therapists mishandle that and they try to diagnose you and you're like, no, this really does hurt me. And so with that, you know, it's just transparency. It's just being really honest that you feel shameful about it and just owning that and being like, yeah, I have a lot of shame over the fact that I can't trust because it's almost a thing on, on us from society or whoever that just says we're supposed to just trust. Well, that's bullshit. So we can just take that pressure off of ourselves. No, trust is something that we cultivate, we build. And so remove the shame first and foremost that you even struggle with it. It's let that go. And the other thing is if you really, if this is a real big area, like when I say really struggling with trust, like tell me if you relate, like all of a sudden your heart starts beating really fast. You can't breathe. Your mind just starts going everywhere. Like it affects your body. Your stomach hurts. Like everything just starts shutting down. That's when you know you really struggle with it. And I've been there. So I know, I know exactly where you're at. But the thing is, is being very transparent, finding a partner that you can talk and they can work through this with you. And finding a partner who is a very secretive person is like throwing, you know, gasoline on fire. It's just not a good scenario. Instead, what you want to do is find someone who's really comfortable in their skin, who's really comfortable with being transparent about themselves first and foremost, because if they can give that gift to themselves, they can give it to you. And find a person that you feel comfortable and safe with to transparently walk this out. So when something happens, if there's a guy or a girl that shows up out of nowhere and all of a sudden that trust button is just going off, danger, Will Robinson, danger, that you can transparently share that with your partner and say, hey, um, this is totally what's going on inside of me and I just want to be transparent with you. I am feeling this. And for that partner to be able to go, I'm really sorry you're feeling that. Can I hold you? Can I support you in this? That's totally different than being with someone who places blame on you and goes, why are you? And they get defensive. Why are you feeling this way? Why are you doing this? This is your trust issues. That is not a safe person. And that's really a sign of immaturity on their part. So, you know, maybe even being transparent about that. If you do have a partner in that and say, you know what? I really don't feel like you're handling this in a really mature way. I'm sharing a very vulnerable portion of who I am with you and you can really hurt me in this. So if your goal is not to hurt me and to love me, I would really encourage you to handle this in a much more mature way and then communicate what it is that you need from that person. You know, I need to be one be held. Like just let, let me know that everything's okay. Hold me first and foremost. And as I'm sharing this with you, please don't judge me and please don't get defensive. I'm not saying that you're doing anything. I'm just telling you how I personally feel. And that's something I would encourage you with is just always hold space. And when I say hold space, be responsible for yourself in that. Don't throw it out on them and you're doing this and you're doing that. And third, listen, if you're in a relationship and that is constantly being violated and the person just refuses to gain maturity in this and you just never can cultivate a safety with them, chances are you need to consult a coach, a therapist to walk through it. And if that's just not an option, you're not willing to do that, then you may reconsider the relationship that you're in. And if you're not going to work through it, then you need to walk out of it. But first, and foremost, you got to do it within yourself. Ask yourself, yeah, I've been betrayed in the past, but are there still areas in my life 
where I'm betraying myself and how do I change that? Because when you feel powerful in yourself, it takes the button off of feeling like a victim that anybody can hurt you at any given moment when they betray you. So be in integrity with yourself. Make sure that you're nurturing yourself, you're caring for yourself, and that you're in integrity with yourself. That when you say that you're gonna do something for yourself, that you really follow through and you do that. So can trust be built? Absolutely. Will it require patience, humility, transparency, safety, nurture? You bet, but you know what? You're worth the investment and your heart is worth taking the time because your heart matters. If this video resonated with you, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. And I always encourage you, be sure to share this. You never know who's going through what. And you might be able to save a relationship. You might even be able to save a person's life just by sharing this simple video. You never know what impact your share can make.